Welcome to Mark's Tech Talk. In this video, we're going to analyze a series parallel RLC circuit. In order to do this, I'm going to assume you have a calculator capable of doing arithmetic with complex numbers. I use a Hewlett Packard. A lot of my students use Texas Instruments. And uh, Casio makes a calculator capable of doing this. So uh, assuming you have that, you're going to follow along. Uh, you'll find that I go very rapidly. Uh, because I'm going to assume as you are following along, you are going to pause the video as needed in order to try the calculations yourself and follow along with what I'm doing. So with that, let's go to the first circuit. Here we have a resistor and then a parallel combination of a capacitor and inductor. Uh, first thing we're going to do is to convert the inductance and the capacitance into reactances. Uh, so we have to find X of L and X of C. X of L is 2 pi FL. Plug our numbers in and we get a value X of L is 452 ohms. 452. Now we do the same thing with X of C. X of C is 1 over 2 pi FC. Plug our numbers in and we get X of C is 265 ohms. Now we're going to put those numbers aside and use those in order to calculate the total Z. Now when we do total Z, notice we have the resistor in series and then we have two parallel branches. So the resistor will be added to the parallel branches, which we will do with product over sum. Okay, it's just two branches, so we can use product over sum. So we'll write out the resistor as zero uh, imaginary and 500 real. So we write that as 500 plus J zero. Resistor is all real. And then the first parallel branch is the capacitor. The capacitor is a negative imaginary, so we'll write that as zero minus J265. And then the inductor is 0 plus J452. We add those together. 0 plus 0 gives us 0. Minus 265 and a positive 452 gives us a positive 187. Uh, so we do that arithmetic with the calculator and we'll get a total Z of 813 ohms and an angle of minus 52. Uh, I normally have my calculator set to polar notation. Uh, you may get an answer in rectangular. You can use either notation uh, for the rest of the problem. Uh, your calculator will accept either polar or rectangular. Uh, so I'm going to keep that in polar, and then I'm going to use Ohm's law in order to find the current. Voltage is 15 angle zero. Uh, the Z we just found. So the current works out to be 18.5 milliamps and angle of 52 degrees. All right, that's the total current in the circuit, and that's what we were looking for. So next circuit, a little bit more complicated. We're again going to find the total current in the circuit. This time we have a resistor and a capacitor in series, and again, two parallel branches, but one extra component. So uh, one step we can skip is we don't have to find the reactances, the X of C and the X of L, because those are given already, uh, just to make the problem a little bit shorter here. So given those values of X and, of course, the R's, let's see if we can find the total Z. Uh, the se series components are the 3K resistor and the 2K capacitor. Uh, resistor is real. The capacitor is a negative imaginary. That gives us 3K minus J 2K. And then that's added because it's in series. And it's going to be added to two parallel branches. So we do product over sum. The first branch is a 5K resistor and a 4K in inductor. Inductor is a positive imaginary, so it's 5K plus J 4K. And the second branch is a capacitor. That would be a negative imaginary. Write that as 0 minus J 1K. And again, I'm going to do the addition of those two in my head. 5K plus 0 gives me 5K. And a 4K minus 1K gives me plus 3K. Now I do the rest in the calculator, and I get a total Z of 4.41K, an angle of minus 44.5. Now that I have the total Z, I can use Ohm's law. The voltage is 10 angle zero. Divide by the Z I just found, and I get a current of 2.27 milliamps, angle 44.5 degrees. So that's the total current in this circuit. All right, next one. This time we're only going to find the total impedance. We're just going to write the equation. Uh, presumably you can do the calculator work and you can do Ohm's law. Let's just work on the equation. Now, uh, let's take a look at the circuit before we do that. 
Uh, notice, first of all, we have the uh, reactances. Uh, we don't have to convert from uh, the inductance to reactance. It's given already. And as far as the circuit's concerned, we have two components in series. And then we have a parallel branch here, and then another parallel branch here. There are two separate parallel circuits because of this line that's joining in the middle. Okay, it's not this branch in parallel with this branch. It's a 3K in parallel with the 4K, and then that is in series with the 1K parallel 7K. Again, because of this line that changes everything right there, actually makes it two different parallel circuits. All right, knowing that, let's see if we can write the equation, the total Z of the circuit. Uh, that would be expressed as the 8K resistor plus the 5K inductor that are in series. So it's 8K plus J5K. We add to that the first parallel branch, that's the one on top. That's a 3K resistor in parallel with 4K inductor. So 3K plus J0 multiplied by 0 plus J4K. And then uh, add those up. Uh, 3K plus 0 is 3K. 0 plus 4K is 4K. So we divide by 3K plus J4K. And then we do the same thing with the bottom parallel circuit. Uh, we have a 7K resistor in parallel with a 1K inductor. So that's 7K plus J0 times 0 plus J1K divided by 7K plus J1K. And that is the equation for the total Z. And that seems to be the most difficult part for a lot of students. Uh, hopefully uh, you can do the calculator exercise and convert that to a, a single complex number and then put that in Ohm's Law from there. But all we're going to do with this problem is just to find that equation. All right, here's another one. Uh, this time we want to find the current in the capacitor. Okay, not the total current, but the current in the capacitor. But we're going to start off the same way by finding the total current. Uh, so let's do that by finding the total Z of the circuit. Uh, total Z is the 2K and a 5K inductor in series. So it's 2K plus J5K. And then parallel, we have the 4K resistor and the 3K capacitor. That's 4K plus J0, that's the resistor. And then 0 minus J3K is the capacitor. Divide by the sum of those two, which is 4K minus J3K. Now when I do that arithmetic in a calculator, I get a total Z of 4.62K, angle 41.8. Of course, the units are ohms there. Now I can use Ohm's law. Uh, voltage divided by total Z gives me the total current, and that total current works out to be 5.41 milliamps, an angle of minus 41.8. So that's a total current, but we're looking for the current through the capacitor. So uh, we'll use that total current, and then we're going to put it together with the current divider rule. Uh, you may remember this from DC. Uh, this is the special case where we have two branches. We take the co total current, uh, multiply by the opposite branch, and divide by the sum of the two branches. So total current, 5.4 milliamps. Uh, the opposite branch is the 4K resistor. And then the sum of both branches is 4K minus J3K. Again, that's current divider for AC, a special case for two branches. So we do that arithmetic, and we get the Capacitor current at 4.33, angle minus 4.9 milliamps. Okay, uh, just a reminder, when you're using this current divider, special case for two branches, the numerator is the opposite branch of what you're looking for. So we were looking for capacitor current, so the numerator is going to be the uh, Z of the resistor. Okay, let's move on. And we'll wrap things up here with a circuit that kind of shows you a little bit of everything. Uh, we're back to original capacitance and inductance values. And we have to find the capacitive reactance, inductive reactance. And uh, then we're going to solve everything. But we also have to find all the currents and all the voltages. So X of L, 2 pi FL, we'll get a value of 4.24 K. X of C, uh, this is the first one, the one in the series. That comes out to 6.37. I'm sorry, that is the one, uh, that's the capacitor in the parallel branch. And then the capacitor that's in uh, series, that's the 0.005 microfarad. Uh, that works out to be 1.27 kilo ohms. So uh, we're going to put those values aside. And uh, now we can 
utilize those uh, in order to find the total z. Now the total z here is going to be, uh, excuse me here, let me uh, get out of here, there we go. Uh, total z is going to be the uh, 2.7 uh, plus j0, that's the resistor. Uh, and then on the other end, uh, the other series component is the capacitor on the bottom. That's a 0 minus J 1.27 K. And then we have the two parallel branches in the middle. Uh, first branch is 6.8 K resistor in series with a 4.24 uh, K inductor. So 6.8 plus J 4.24. And the second branch is the 8.2 K resistor in series with the 6.37 K uh, capacitor. Uh, so that's 8.2. K minus J 6.37. Add those up, we get 15K minus J 2.13K. And uh, now we can collect terms a little bit, uh, two series components. We can add the real part, add the imaginary part, and get one term there. Uh, so that would be um, okay. So when I collect the terms, I got 2.7K minus J 1.27K plus the parallel branches, which we just went over. All I did was collect the first and the last term there and put them together in one. Makes it a little bit easier to enter that in the calculator. All right, so uh, once I do put that in the calculator, I get a value of 8.2K angle 7.38 ohms. That is the total Z of the circuit. We can use that to find the total current. Uh, and if you want, if you have your calculator set to rectangular, that's the rectangular value. Okay, so current voltage divided by that Z. Again, I use polar. You can use either one. And you'll get a value of 2.18 milliamps, angle 7.38. That's the total current, which happens to be the current through the 2.7K resistor and through that 0 0.005 microfarad capacitor. Uh, so we have total current. Uh, next thing we're going to do here is to find the Voltage across that 2.7K resistor, that's simply Ohm's law, the total current, times the Z of that resistor, 2.7K plus J0. That gives us the voltage across that series resistor, that's 5.89, angle 7.38. I can do the same thing with the capacitor on the bottom, total current times the Z of that capacitor is 0 minus J 1.27K. That gives us a voltage across that bottom capacitor, 2.77 volts, angle minus 82.6. Now what we can do is a Kirchhoff's voltage law. We have the source voltage. We have the voltage across the top resistor, the voltage across the bottom capacitor. If we add those up, then we should be left with the voltage across the parallel branches. So the voltage across the parallel branches is the source voltage minus the resistor voltage minus the capacitor voltage. Again, that's Kirchhoff's voltage law going around the loop. And VP is the uh, voltage across the two parallel branches. So I fill in my numbers there, and I get VP as being 12 angle 9.57 volts. Again, that VP is the voltage across the two parallel branches. Now I can use that VP in order to find the current. So this is the current through the inductor and, of course, through that 6.8K resistor. Uh, that would be the voltage divided by the Z of that branch. The Z of that branch is 6.8K plus J 4.24K. And that gives us a current of 1.5 milliamps, angle minus 22. Now I'll do the same thing with the other branch. Uh, this is the current through the capacitor and, of course, the 8.2K resistor. And that works out to be 1.16, angle 47.4 milliamps. So I have those values. The uh, I of the current in the uh, inductor and the I the current in the capacitor. Uh, so uh, the voltage across the inductor is simply that current, the 1.5 mils, angle minus 22, multiplied by the Z of the inductor is 0 plus J 4.24. And that gives us 6.36 volts and an angle of 67.6. That's the voltage across that inductor. Now the voltage across the capacitor same idea, the current times the Z, uh, different current though, it's the capacitor current, 
Uh, so uh, that will work out to 7.39 volts angle minus 42.6. So we'll put those aside. And now we have to get the voltage across the two resistors that are in the parallel branches. Uh, the resistor in a capacitor branch, that's the 8.2 resistor, will be that current, 1.16, angle 47, times the Z of that resistor, 8.2K minus J0. That gives us a value of 9.51, angle 47.4. And then we could do the same thing with the 6.8 resistor. That's the resistor in the inductive branch, the current inductive inductive branch, 1.5 milliamps, angle minus 22, the Z of the resistor, 6.8K plus J0, gives us a value of uh, voltage across that resistor of 10.2, angle minus 22.4. And that is all of the values that we need. One quick double check you can do is go around a loop and add up all the voltage drops and see if it adds up to zero. So if you go around this loop here, the inner loop here, with the inductor and the 6.8 uh, resistor, all those uh, voltages I've indicated with a plus sign. And if you add up those four voltages, uh, you should get the uh, source voltage of 18 angle zero. And I did that, and I got something very, very close to it with perhaps a little bit of rounding error there. Uh, but it really uh, was close enough that uh, I feel pretty comfortable that the numbers I got were correct. Uh, you can do the same thing if you wish around the outer loop. Add up all the voltages around the outer loop. You can. You should get uh, a zero uh, if you do that. So that's how to analyze a series parallel RLC circuit. I hope you learned something today. And stay tuned for more videos on Mark's Tech Talk. Thanks for watching.